Hello and welcome, this is Jenna from McGuire. Recently I have shared two videos that give a close look at the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens and how to use them. Well, I've gotten a lot of questions since, since putting out those videos, so I thought I'd do another that addresses some of those questions. Now, if you haven't seen my first two videos, I encourage you to watch those first before watching this one. You can click here on the screen if you're on your computer. If you're on a mobile device, you'll have to click the links below in the YouTube description. Now, on the left is my first video. It gives some details about the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens, what they're like, and kind of how they work. Then on the right is my second video, which gives six specific ways to use the pens, and it just shows you how versatile they are. Now in this video, I'm going to share additional information for you based on the questions that I have received. So forgive me if the video is a little bit long and if it seems like it jumps around a bit. I just want to make sure that everything is included. Since filming those last two videos, I did purchase all 80 of the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. Now you do not need all 80 pens by any means. A lot of these colors blend so easily that you can just have a few and a few will go a long way. However, I wanted to get all of the colors so that I could do a color comparison over on my blog. I'll have photos of all of these ink charts here so you can kind of pick what colors you might want to try because you can buy these pens individually or in sets. And I'll also have a download for this ink chart if you want to create your own. So be sure to head to my blog. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Before we move on to some specific detailed information, let's just review the basics quickly. These pens are a water-based dye ink. So they have a water-based dye ink in it with a brush tip. When you get the pens, they are individually wrapped with a very tight wrapper. You can barely see it in here because it's so tight. It's a tricky to remove unless you do this trick I'm gonna share here. You twist the cap to break the wrapper, then you pull the bottom half off and then the top half, and that will save you a ton of time. Now these pens can be used with or without water. In my little ink charts there, the left-hand column is the marker without water, and then the right-hand column is the marker with some water kind of blending it out. So I can see how the color looks with or without water. What really sets these pens apart from other watercolor markers is the tip. The tip is an actual brush. Many watercolor markers say they have a brush tip, but it's kind of a firm point. This actually has bristles. So I'm gonna pull the tip apart here so you can see the bristles. So when you take this to the paper, you can go down lightly and have a very fine stroke, or you can press more firmly and get a broad stroke. And I like that you can have the options. If you like hand lettering, these would be great for that. So keep in mind with your coloring, this is a brush tip, so it will feel different than other markers you have. And I actually like it because I feel like I'm painting, but I have a lot of control over the color. There are many other advantages to this brush tip. One is you can color on top of another color without worrying about contaminating the tip of the marker because it is a brush and you can just kind of scribble the extra color off. So there I went over the red with the yellow and was able to blend the colors together without water and I don't have to worry about damaging the tip. Now here I am just quickly putting some color down and I'm going to blend the two colors with some water. So I like having the brush tip because you can quickly apply a lot of color and you don't see like the scribble lines. It goes down pretty solid and then you can blend it with water if you want to. Another advantage of the brush tip is you can do tip to tip techniques. So I'm taking my yellow tip, touching it to the blue tip to pick up some of that color. When I bring it to the paper, it goes, it starts out green, the mix of the two colors, and then I can fade back off into yellow. And I will not damage the tip of my marker. With some other markers that I have that are for watercolor, you would damage the tip. So you wanna be careful with other markers, but with these, you don't have to worry about it. You can also scribble the colors right onto a craft sheet or a piece of plastic, mix them together with water and create new colors. So that bold yellow and that bold blue, I mix together with some water to create these different shades here. You can also overlap the colors right onto your paper. You don't have to worry about it. Even if your paper is wet, you can take the brush tip to the paper at any time and you don't have to worry about any kind of damage. Now, as I kind of play around here a little bit more, I did want to answer one question that I got asked probably the most, and that is if these pens are refillable. They are not refillable. I did ask Zig. Um, I did talk to a few different artists who have actually been using these pens for a long time and using them often, and they said they hadn't had the pens run out yet. So it seems like there's a lot of ink in there and they will last a while. Another question that I keep hearing is about creating backgrounds. Can you use these markers to create those gorgeous watercolor backgrounds that are popular in card making right now? 
I wanted to show you how easy it is with these pens. I'm just quickly scribbling some color down onto some watercolor paper. You can see the brush tip in action there. If you want these lines to be solid, you can just press down a little bit more and go a little bit slower. Now to blend this, I'm just using a water brush, but you can use a brush with water if you prefer. And I'm just going back and forth and you can see how they blend very effortlessly together. You can just go back and forth and you get a great blend. You can use more water if you want more of a watercolory look, but when this dries, it will give you the look of a traditional watercolor background, but you have more control over the color because it's in that pen form. So you can see the beautiful results you get there. Here's just another example. I put down some quick purple and a little bit of pink next to it, going back and forth here. If you want darker colors, just put more color down first, and you could skip the water if you wanted to. You can also add tons of water to this, and like splotches of water or mists of water to get really funky backgrounds, which are popular in watercoloring. So here I'm just gonna take a water bottle and just spray the living daylights out of this. So there's lots of color on there. You can see the watercolor kind of reacting with each other. When this dries, you get a really kind of fun background. So you can vary the amounts of water to get more of a watercolory look if you want to. Another question I've been getting a lot is about the paper I use. As I mentioned, I always use watercolor paper with these pens because I think they blend better on watercolor paper, even if I'm not using water. Now you can get watercolor paper anywhere, even inexpensive watercolor paper would work. Throughout this video, I use watercolor paper on all of my examples, except here I just wanted to show you on regular white cardstock. You can still get some blending without water on it, but I think the results are always better on watercolor paper, so that's what I recommend. Many people also asked if you can use the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens with the Dove Blender Pen. I wish I would have included this in my first videos because it really works well. So the Dove Blender Pen is just like a clear ink that helps with blending. It's refillable and very inexpensive. It works with colored pencils and watercolor, and it works great with these pens. So here I'm on watercolor paper again. I just put down some color with my Real Brush Pen, and now I'm using my Dove Blender Pen to kind of fade it out. So if you want that faded, blended look out into a lighter color, but don't want to use water, you can use the Dove Blender Pen. Remember, you can also use the brushes themselves to blend colors without water. Now, another thing that you can do with the Dove Blender Pen is get super soft color. So here I just put down a line of color and I can blend that out to be soft. So if you feel like you struggle with using water with watercolor markers, you can use the Dove Blender Pen and you have a lot more control. The Dove Blender Pen will also allow you to get softer colors. So here I'm going to put down one line of red, one line of yellow, blend it together with my blender pen and you can get a softer orange color. If you would have used the marker for all of that like I did there on the left, you would have had more bold color. So yes, these pens work really well with the Dove Blender Pen. It's nice to have yet another way of using these pens. Yet another product that you can use to blend your markers is the Wink of Stella Shimmer Pen. I showed this in one of my previous videos about these real brush markers, but I wanted to mention this because I got a lot of questions. The Wink of Stella Shimmer Pen is somewhat like a water brush, but it has a shimmery liquid inside that you can scribble on the top of anything that you have made. You can also use it to blend your markers together because there's a liquid in there and you get beautiful shimmer. Now some people express concerns because eventually this liquid runs out. What I recommend is you unscrew the top, take off the little black piece and refill it with some more water. That will revive any of the shimmer that kind of settled in the pen and you can get a second life out of it. So you can see there's still plenty of shimmer there, not as much as originally, but it's a great way to extend the life of this product. Okay, so stamping. Many people asked if you can use these real brush pens for stamping. So it's like coloring the color on the stamp and stamping with it. Now, I wouldn't really recommend this. I think you'll get better results for stamping if you use an ink pad. However, if you wanna mix colors or get a different look, you can use these. You're not gonna get a super solid result. You don't with many watercolor markers anyways, but you do get pretty good results. You can blend two colors together this way. So here I'm going to scribble on a little bit of dark pink and then also scribble on some yellow. And again, since this is a brush tip, I can overlap those colors without worrying about damaging the tip. So I kind of let those colors overlap a bit and now I'm going to stamp that again and you can get that variation of color like an ombre look. Now here's a trick. If you do want to stamp these images with this ink, 
what you can do is take that Dove blender pen to scribble over it and it blends it together and then you'll get really good results. I plan to do a video on this in the future because I think this is a great trick. When you stamp with any kind of markers and it looks a little splotchy, just use a Dove blender pen over it and that'll help blend it and smooth it out so you get solid results. But yes, the answer is you can use these brush tip pens for stamping. But keep in mind, it's kind of hard to apply ink evenly with a brush tip on a stamp. Here I'm doing it with a detailed sentiment stamp. And it takes me a little bit of time because I'm not really sure if I'm doing a good job applying it. But it does work. And when I stamp it, I'm pleasantly surprised to see that I get pretty good results. So if you do want to stamp with these, it is possible. So this brings me to the most difficult question of all. I'm going to have a hard time answering this. And that is how these clean color real brush markers compare to other markers out there. The fact is, is they're very different than other markers out there. It's hard to compare. It's apples and oranges. This is the only uh, real brush tip marker that I have found in a lot of colors that I like. So I have watercolor markers, I have Copic markers, but this is a different ball game. I mean, this is completely different, so it's hard to compare. But I am going to give it my best shot here. One marker that a lot of people asked about is how does this compare to distress markers? I really love distress markers. I like kind of the muted tones of these markers. I like how well they blend with water. This is a distress marker here. It's got the bigger tip and then a fine tip. And they work the same way with water on watercolor paper. Very similar. In fact, the two color palettes together would be very nice. So if you have distress markers and you're looking for something that you want to use with water, I think you're set. You don't really need the clean color real brush. However, if you want to blend them dry, like I'm doing here, you can see the distress markers don't blend um, without water as well as the clean color real brush because the distress markers were meant for other things. They were meant for unique techniques like you get with distress inks. So it depends on what you're looking for. I will still use my distress markers often and I still will use my clean color real brush. But if you are just looking for a marker to use with water and you have the distress markers, I think you're set. But again, the real brush markers have that brush tip, which sets them apart. I wanted to show you also how distress markers stamp. These stamp pretty well also. You can also use the Dove Blender pen to kind of make the image more solid, like I did with the examples I showed you earlier. You can also use two markers here. You don't really damage the tip of these markers when you touch two colors together. So you can get similar results for stamping with these also. Now one thing I wanted to say is some people talk about their distress markers drying out very quickly. I can tell you that this isn't a problem if you do this. You have to push the cap on really hard so you don't see that black line around the bottom of the cap. If you snap it on, they'll last a long time. Okay, so another watercolor marker that I really like is the Spectrum Aqua Marker. These are kind of newer. Now these seem feel like they go on very similar to the clean color real brush pens. This has a blunt tip. It doesn't have the brush tip once again, but you can blend these a little bit without water. You can see there's a little bit of blending going on there. With water, these blend beautifully. And I like these just like I like the distress markers. Now I usually don't do tip to tip with these because I worry about staining the tips, but you can do it by all means. You can do it and scribble off the excess. Uh, I don't think you get as good of results of picking up another color as you do with the real brush pens, but you are able to do it. And again, these blend beautifully with water. So I really like the Spectrum Aqua for watercolor techniques also. But again, it has the solid tip. It has actually this big tip and the fine tip on the other end, which makes them very different than the real brush markers that I've been showing you. So that was just a quick comparison, but basically in summary, these markers can give you similar watercolor results that you get from watercolor markers. It's just that the pen itself is very different from other watercolor markers. It has that brush tip and it can be used without water too. So that makes it a little bit different. So in the end, I'm not sure. If you have watercolor markers and you're happy with them, you may not need these. Another question that I have been asked a lot is how the blending without water with these markers compares to that of Copic markers. Now Copic markers are completely different. It's a different ball game and a different ballpark in a different part of town. It's an amazing ballpark, but it's very different. You can get good blending with these markers with most of the colors without water. I wouldn't say they replace Copic, but if you kind of want that blended look of Copic but are afraid to get into the Copic world, these could be fun for you to play with.
I know that's not exactly a straightforward answer, but I hope you believe that I'm trying my best to show you how these pens are similar and different, and hopefully you can decide what is best for you. Okay, now I just wanted to talk a little bit about how I organize these pens and how I store them. I got questions about that too. One thing that I have found extremely helpful is to put a little swatch of what the color inside each marker looks like on the top of the pen cap itself. This is the way I go about doing that. I scribble some of the color on watercolor paper and then I add a little bit of water. So I have a little swatch of that color. And I do this for all the colors and I let them dry. Now the reason I'm adding these color swatches to the top of my pens is because I grab these markers and I take them with me to baseball games and to kids practices and such and I do coloring while I'm on the go. This way I can just see the color right on the top of the pen and know quickly what color it is I'm reaching for. Okay, so once I have all of my little color swatches done, I just take a little hole punch and punch a tiny little circle from this and then I glue this on the top of the pen lid. You could get little white stickers to do this, but I wanted the color to be what it looks like exactly on the paper I use, that watercolor paper that I always use. So I'm putting down some multi-medium, it's a strong liquid adhesive, little dot of that on the cap, and then I glue the little swatch on there. And then I let that dry. So I've done this for all of my pens. Once that adhesive is dry, I do go back and I do one more thing. Now remember, these markers you can use with or without water. So I want the sample on the top of the cap to show what it looks like without the water and with the water. So on the left, it's what it's like with the water. On the right is the color that it is without the water. So I have both, I, um, both of those colors shown on the top of each cap. I have found this very helpful. It took some time, of course, to do, but I found it extremely helpful in you know, kind of getting me used to the colors that each of these markers offer. Next, I just wanted to talk about the storage unit that I have my markers in. One of my readers told me about this piece a while ago, and I'm really happy that I got it. It's a square unit with four compartments. If you're going to get all 80 pens, this is a great set, uh, great container for all 80 pens. If you aren't going to get all 80 pens, which I don't recommend, you could also get a smaller container or you could put other markers in here with it. The reason I like this container is I can slide my ink swatches into it. Also, I can pre-stamp a bunch of watercolor paper, slide that into it. I can keep my water brush so that I'm ready to go with that. I can put my Wink of Stella. Then I can pick up this container and take it with me to baseball practice or dance class so that I have some coloring to do on the go. Now, here's the great thing about Zig markers. These clean color real brush pens can be stored horizontally or vertically. So it's totally up to you. The company said it doesn't matter. I actually store these horizontally, but when I take them to go, I lift them up vertically. And it's nice that it really doesn't matter whatever storage option is best for you. If you're only going to get a handful of these, you could put some, these in one compartment in this container and some other markers in another compartment and put them all together. Now one crazy thing I decided to do while filming this was to put a coat of glossy accents on the top of each of my swatches just to protect them and make sure they stay there and kind of give it a finished look. I'm glad I did this. It only took me a few minutes. I don't know. Call me crazy, but I thought it kind of looked cool. So now I have some dried glossy accents on the top of each of my caps. I really like having the colors on the caps. It really saves a lot of time. And now for the last question that I've been asked quite a bit, and it's another tough one to answer, and that is what colors I would suggest starting with. I mentioned you don't need all of them, you just need a handful, but this is a tough question because some people like bright colors, some people like muted. So what I did is I put all 80 colors up on my blog so you can compare and choose what you think you might like. I will list the ones that I reach for often, but can, keep in mind I like bright colors. Now I do recommend getting some super light colors. It's unusual to have watercolor pens with light colors and I love that because you can do soft backgrounds or halos very easily without much effort. So I recommend getting some of the light colors like that flesh color on the bottom is perfect for skin tones. Now I will say that I really like the lights and the brights in this collection. I really do. I struggle most with the browns and finding a brown that I really am drawing to all the time. You'll notice there are quite a few here. So just pick one and I think you're probably good to go with the browns. There are also quite a few grays in this collection. I would pick maybe a light and a dark and you would be good with that too. But again, it just depends on what you reach for often. Usually for brown colors, I like to reach for the distress mark because I find there are great colors in that collection and you can use these markers along with other markers you already have. 
Now, as I mentioned, you can get some of these markers in packs. There's a 12 pack, 24, 36, 48, and 60. However, there are 80 markers available. So if you want all of them, you're gonna have to buy some individually also. Now you could do the packs. The 12 pack is actually a pretty good one, or you can just buy these all individually and I'll list some sources for that. So it's totally up to you how you try out these markers. You could always just try out a few of them and see if you like them. And again, over on my blog, I'll have much more information for you, including a download of these ink swatches. All you have to do is print it onto watercolor paper, add in your colors, trim it down, and you're good to go. So that's it, your questions answered on the Clean Color Real Brush pens. I hope you found this helpful. I'm sorry that it's a little bit longer. I just wanted to make sure to squeeze everything in. If you have any questions, you can leave them below my YouTube um, comment area or over on my blog, and I'll be sure to answer them. If you're interested in the products that I talk about here, they're linked to multiple sources in my YouTube description below. And as always, be sure to head over to my blog where I'll have a whole lot more information for you. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you'll come back again soon.